the second part of managing user preferences, we are going to talk about notable opt-in and opt-out laws. We're going to discuss customer access and redress, and we're going to end by talking about the relevant parts of the APEC principles. I know this seems like an, an odd place to throw in Asia Pacific economic cooperation principles. However, the body of knowledge sometimes tucks things away in weird places. So there we go. With regards to managing user preferences, there are a few different laws that we need to know about because they have peculiar requirements. And then we have a note here about the FTC. The laws that we're going to talk about are COPPA, the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, the FCRA, or Fair Credit Reporting Act, and HIPAA, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. At this point in the course, if you're following sequentially, beginning at the beginning and, and moving your way through, if you're not jumping around, we haven't talked about these three laws just yet, and that's fine. We'll, we'll come back around to this. But because we're talking about opt-in, opt-out, and managing user preferences, this seems like a good place to make a couple notes. With regards to COPPA, it's important that parents opt in before their children's data is collected. This is required by COPPA. For the Fair Credit Reporting Act, individuals need to opt in before a credit report is shared with an employer, lender, or other authorized recipient. And with regards to HIPAA, it's important that a patient opts in before their data is disclosed to a third party. In each of these three cases, the individual, the data subject, is opting in to having their data collected or to having their data disclosed to another person or organization. I wanted to stress again the importance here about the FTC guidance on opting in concerning material changes to a privacy policy. In a previous lecture, we discussed, for example, that if a company does not share data when the company first starts, but changes their privacy policy in the future so that they begin sharing data, that updated privacy policy needs to be communicated to all of the consumers, and the consumers need to have an opportunity to opt into that chain. If not, the FTC could come after you with an enforcement action. Three notable opt-out laws include GLA, this is the Graham Leach Bliley Act, the Video Privacy Protection Act, or VPPA, CAN SPAM, which stands for Confronting the Assault on Non-Solicited Pornography and Marketing, and finally, the Do Not Call Rule. Again, we haven't come across and, and dove into these in any detail whatsoever, but because we're talking about notable opt-out laws, this is a good point to call these out. For the GLBA, consumers must have the option to opt out of having a company send their data to unaffiliated third parties. For the VPPA, video rental companies must give customers an option to opt out before their data is disclosed to a third party. I'm not quite sure how many video rental companies are, are still around. Uh, and, and I wonder whether or not that applies to streaming services, but that's a different topic. For can spam, email marketers must give consumers an option to opt out of receiving communications. And finally, the do not call rule gives consumers the right to opt out of telemarketing. And this is done on a company by company basis, even though there, there are some uh, there are some services out there that you can sign up for, pay a small fee, and, and they will do all of that on your behalf. Regarding opt-outs and self-regulation, there are several self-regulatory groups that require their members to provide opt-out mechanisms. You'll remember from several lectures ago that a self-regulatory group is a group that oversees a particular industry and the incentive for not only self-regulation, but adhering to self-regulation is to keep the government, to keep regulators at bay, to keep them from legislating and making all of this mandatory. Self-regulation organizations that you need to know about with regards to opt-out are the Data and Marketing Association, 
the Digital Advertising Alliance, the Network Advertising Initiative, and TrustArc. We will come back to all of these self-regulatory organizations in a future lecture. We're now going to talk a moment about access and redress. Just as a review, access is when a consumer has the right to request access to or to review their data or records. And redress in this context is synonymous with amendment. It's where the consumer may request that their data or that their records are corrected. Two laws that require access and redress are the FCRA and HIPAA. And four frameworks that also require this are the OECD, the EU-US Privacy Shield, and GDPR. Again, I have an asterisk here next to the Privacy Shield because at the time of recording, that is now defunct and has been replaced with something else. And, and we will get to that at another stage. A quick note here on the Judicial Redress Act of 2015. You need to understand what a qualifying non-US individual is. This is a, a term that refers to this particular statute. And a qualifying non-US individual is an individual that may use civil action against a US government agency to gain access to covered records. We're going to finish by talking just a minute about the APEC principles that apply to opt-in, opt-out, managing user preferences, and redress or access and amendment. These include confirming whether an organization holds data or records that belong to an individual, responding in a reasonable time, manner, and form, giving consumers the opportunity to amend incorrect information. There are some exceptions where an organization may deny an individual's request. These exceptions are, it creates an unreasonable burden on the organization. Perhaps the PII cannot be disclosed for legal or security reasons, or the disclosure of those records of that data may violate another individual's privacy. Finally, as we've said before, if a request for access is denied, it's important that the organization provide a reason for that denial. In this lecture, we have concluded the section on managing user preferences. We started by talking about notable opt-in and opt-out laws. It's important that you understand that COPPA, the FCRA, and HIPAA have particular opt-in requirements. And with regards to opt-out, GLBA, VPPA, CAN-SPAM, and the Do Not Call rule have particular opt-out requirements. We then talked about consumer access and redress. Redress here is synonymous with amendment. We've used it before. For the Judicial Redress Act of 2015, you need to know the definition of qualifying non-US individuals. And we concluded with a discussion about the APEC principles that concern opt-in, opt-out, and other user preferences.